Welcome brothers to another Warhammer reaction. Today we check out for the first time Major Kills channel top 10 biggest bad asses in Warhammer 40k. This was a request a while ago. I don't remember who it was by at this point. Usually when you guys send me requests I literally just click on the link or search it up and add it to watch later and then I see videos and watch later and I go from there. I don't know what his parameters are going to be. Uh, he's probably going to pick guys from all kinds of races or, you know, I'm, I'm assuming. Or maybe he'll pick certain sex. I don't know. But yeah, we're going to get into this video, man. You guys let me know some predictions down below. Who do you think is going to be in here, man? Who do you think is going to be in here? I don't know if he's going to do single Primarchs or anything like that. It, it'll be interesting, man. But without further ado, we're going to get into this video. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Join us on this Warhammer journey. And of course, you can suggest me videos in the comments. Ooh la la. Major Kill is having another go at 40k lore after the last video was underwhelming. But as the saying goes, if it doesn't work the first time, it will definitely work the second time. So here we are, doing the very reliable ad revenue top 10 biggest badasses in Warhammer 40k. Now, I've been a bit random recently, that's because my uh, drunk ass was training for a jiu-jitsu competition every day for like three hours, which was a bit cooked, but I ended up with the gold medal at Dalian after somehow, after choking the tits off five other blokes. So, I would say that's worth it. However, I'm back in action now, so let's get fucking rowdy. Until right, my buddy. surgery on Monday, but let's not talk about that. All right, buddy. Before we get into it, I just want to explain how quick, uh, quickly how I rank these absolute badass cunts. Yes, sir. This list is not the most who is the most powerful in Warhammer 40k. It's who's the most badass. So we could have some autistic kid in a wheelchair who went full kamikaze alawakba and rolls his suicide bomb chair into the mouth of some big ass tyranid. What? We could have some autistic. What did he say? Badass kid. Who, who went kamikaze alu akbar. Okay. Alright, buddy. Alright. Roll his suicide wheelchair. I've only ever seen that once in Breaking Bad, where they blow up Gus. But that's it. Cunt. And he could be higher on this list than some great warriors who effortlessly kill thousands with their big-ass god swords. So mm. no emperors and no primarchs. And no oh. big dick demons. Sorry, yeah. Horus. Let's get into it. Starting with number 10, we have the second most powerful human psyker after the god emperor himself, Malkador. Now, Malkador wasn't a hunking giant or an unkillable warrior. He was an old, frail looking man. However, this list isn't about a list of roided up Christians. Malkador was already a badass for serving as the emperor's regent and I mean, he died on the golden throne because he couldn't handle the psychic, psychic toll to keep the demons out of the warp, but he done it long enough for the Emperor to get back, which is fair enough. Poor guy. He was an old man. Poor. Look at him. Laying down the foundations for many key organizations to rise, such as the Imperial Inquisition mm. and the Grey Knights. This cunt was also the first Grand Master of the Assassin's Guild, making him already more badass than Ezio. There was a special incident where the Primarch Logar was being a dumb fuck. Ezio? Like, like the Assassin's Creed guy? Is that what he's referencing? Assassin's Creed, man. That game used to piss me off. Literally, it really did. I'm not gonna get into it now, but yeah. And decided to force conquer worlds into religion when he was supposed to do the opposite. Well, he was supposed to conquer them, but he wasn't supposed to like slap him with the Bible. Mm. Malkador was like, cunt, what the fuck are you doing to the Primarch? So Logar, naturally, had a roid rage and backhanded Malkador, sending him flying 20 meters through the air, a hit that would have killed any other mortal man. Malkador simply just got up and dusted himself off. Yes, he had a few cracked bones and he limped around for a while, but copping a hit from a Primarch and getting back up is pretty fucking dope. However, Malkador's true big dick moment came in the pinnacle of the Horus Heresy. With Horus attacking Terra itself, Malkador sat upon the Golden Throne and used his very soul to keep the warp at bay, allowing the Emperor to face and kill Horus, saving the Imperium. When the battle was won, Malkador was discovered on the throne, driven insane by pain and his body was beyond mutilated from the effort of holding back the warp. He was taken off the throne and immediately turned to dust. From henceforth, he was called Malkador, the sick hunt. Alright, fine, it was Malkador the hero, but my mm. version's better. He done the mic guy, he started turning to dust. He, he went eight gates and then, you know, it was game over. I know, I know. Elder are a bunch of sex-obsessed pussies, but I'm gonna chuck Margul and Ra 
Forgive my pronunciation, by the way, guys. I'm from Down Under. We have simple names. We don't call ourselves Margun or Malkador. Um, but I'm going to chuck Margun Ra on this list anyway, because this cunt is fucking sick. Margun Ra was a top dog on the craft world Altansar. Altansar, sure. Which was one of those big ass ships that didn't get instantly anal raped by Slanesh. Unfortunately for the. Ah, oh, cunt. Altansar, they were caught in the Eye of Terror's gravitational pull, and despite their best effort, got sucked into what can only be described as a terrible tourist destination. Margan was resourceful, however, and escaped the disaster that befell his people. Seeking to aid his Eldar brethren in unconventional ways, Margan fought against many threats to the Eldar. He was a renowned Tyranid stomper, as he often single-handedly defeated entire swarms. When Abaddon, the chaotic cunt, came forth to invade the galaxy for like the 30th time, he left a big-ass warp portal just lying around. Now, Margan, being the big badass that he is, saw those warp portals as a great opportunity to look for his craft world that got sucked into the Eye of Terror thousands of years prior. Amazingly, he actually found his craft world in the warp, and it was still intact and populated. For the most part. He guided his people out of the Eye of Terror, which isn't a very common occurrence to be honest. Yeah, definitely not. We haven't known about this guy before, man. He fought off a whole Tyranid horde on his ones. Big man, big man. Alright, buddy. He does look a bit scary, though, I'm not gonna lie. You wouldn't want to see him. I mean, firstly, you wouldn't want to see Conrad in that dark alley, but you see this guy. Probably not much better for you. His people had a fair share of PTSD from the whole 10k mm. years in hell situation, mm. so none of them remove their armor anymore, and they only speak in whispers. They also are shunned by the other Eldar, as they're wary of the fact that these cunts somehow didn't all die. Like, usually people die pretty quick in the warp, but not these guys. It doesn't matter though, with Margan as their commander, we know these Eldar are going to kick some serious ass. Time. Bring out the roided cunts. The Space Marines. Kicking us off with one serious motherfucker. We have Kaldor Drago, who, if you believe some fan theories, is one of the only characters from 40k to make an appearance in Warhammer Fantasy as well. But let's save that for another video. To give our grey nigger a little intro, his first ever battle recorded ended in him cutting the nuts off a greater demon called Makar and saving an entire planetary system. He then rose to become the supreme grand master of the Grey Knights by kicking the ass of a demonic primarch. Eager to get revenge on Drago for slicing his nuts off a few hundred years earlier, the great demon Makar returned and began fucking shit up. Not wanting to get his fellow Grey Knights into shit, Kaldor went off to kill Makar and his army by himself, which mm. despite sounding like a terrible idea, went surprisingly well for Drago, as he slashed and burned through hundreds of demons, until he was face to face with his old nemesis. The two powerful warriors fought, with Makar gaining the upper hand. Just as Kaldor was about to lose a fight, he decided not to lose the fight, and he stabbed Makar through the heart, once again saving everyone. However, as the demon was getting pulled back into the realm of chaos, he pulled a bitch move like the Balrog and grabbed Kaldor and pulled him into the realm of chaos with him. This was to be Makar's greatest mistake, however. Where most men would have instantly gone insane and died, Kaldor decided to fuck shit up as he ran around the chaos realms, absolutely slaughtering the shit out of every demon he found. He burnt Nurgalite forests, tore down Titsnitch's cities, murder fuck Slaneshi's sluts, and curb stomp greater demons of corn like they were nothing. It actually got to a point where the demons were like, fuck this shit, and did everything they could to avoid encountering Kaldor. Even the dark gods themselves were powerless to stop Drago. However, despite him being an absolute badass rapist in the realms of chaos, there was not much meaningful impact he could have while stuck down there. This was not to be his eternal fate, however, as every few hundred years when Chaos invades the galaxy, he is able to temporarily step out of the warp and kick ass for humanity before then getting dragged back to Syria. I mean, the realms of Chaos. Why am I saying and he hasn't Syria? Even this guy has no filter, boys and girls. Jesus. This guy is a crazy guy, bro. His favourite word is cunts, obviously, but you know, we'll move on. I've been complained about it once. Going a bit more green for Earth Day, we have the Prophet of Gork and Mork himself. Gazkul Mag Urak Thraka. I think I, I nailed it. that personally. However, we will just call him Gaz because fuck saying that yeah, name. Gaz. While pretty much every green skin war starts spicy but quickly sizzles out as the orcs lose momentum, Gaz's war just doesn't stop. However, before we talk about him when his balls were massive, let's talk about when he got his head blown apart by a mortar shell. Despite a large portion of his brain being turned to mush and leaking out, Gaz stood back up and just kind of stumbled to safety, holding his brain juice in his hand. He then can 
He then received what can be described as an unsanitary operation on his head, where uh, some random green-skinned cunt with an arts degree replaced most of his brain with wires and squig juice, and then he just welded it all together with adamantium. When, you know, he somehow woke up, when Gaz somehow woke up from the strange surgery that probably had about as high mortality rate as a Polish Jew, he was reborn, mm -hmm. full of strength and with a vision to lead the biggest wine the galaxy had ever seen. If only I got these visions when my brain explodes. Gaz was now a prophet of Gork and Mork. His first act as their prophet would be to survive a hail of bullets and then headbutt a warboss to death. This was just the start, as our boy then went on full to conquer all the Orc tribes on the planet. And there were quite a few Orc tribes because the planet was called Orc itself. With the planet conquered, hundreds of orc ships arrived as they felt the psychic pull of a war forming. Gazkul's or Gaz's superior intellect was used to hold the horde together, as the orcs worked like together like fucking ant colony. From here, old mate Gaz went from strength to strength as he dominated the Chaos Space Hulk and flew into the warp. He chilled out there for a while, growing his army and arsenal while killing a ton of demons, before he eventually left the warp and crash landed on the Imperium and planet of Armageddon. And like a Space Hulk isn't a small ship, like this was a big fucking crash and a lot of cunts died in it. The entire planet became a battleground almost straight away however, um, as Commissar Yarrick of the Imperium was having none of Gaz's bullshit and started pushing his forces back, giving his men enough time for the Space Marines to arrive and to skull fuck Gaz's army to death, mm -hmm. saving the planet. Somehow Gaz survived through his extremely thick plot armor and then he kept attacking the planet and it was a bit of a mess each time. And you know, it still isn't a place you want to visit, like a lot of cunts have died there. The moral of the story is if there's something worth fighting, Gaz has fought it. Now on to Farseer Eldred. Now I know, I know, one elder on this list was bad enough and now there's two, but hear me out. <laughs> Farseer Eldred isn't a badass because he wades through battle swinging his overbearing cock around. In fact, this Farseer is a badass because he is pretty much able to avoid every battle ever, regardless of the consequences that mm. it incurs. Okay. Farseer Eldred is an extremely powerful psyker who is able to see the future and is fiercely protective of the little elder that remain. As such, if he foresees an elder craft world getting into shit, he will fuck over everyone and anyone he needs to in order to save that craft world. For example, if he foresees a greenskinned war heading towards a craft world, who will manipulate an Imperium fleet into being in the war's way, letting them fight it out as the craft world escapes. To that's save kind of, that's kind of mad. That's, that's actually pretty cool. We, have, we don't know about this guy either, but that's, that's pretty cool. He can use his psychic powers to see into the future and then avoid fights. I mean, that's perfect, really, isn't it? 10,000 elder lives, Eldred has sacrificed millions of humans through his manipulation <laughs> of war. Before being a ruthless cunt, however, Eldred was actually, you know, he used his uh, powers for good. He used his incredible perception and abilities to try and help the other races. He was the first person to try and warn the Imperium about the Horus Heresy, and he has prevented the rise of many potential threats and defeated a shit ton of Chaos forces and Tyranid swarms. Despite being a backline psyker, Eldred engaged in a hand to hand fight with Abaddon the Despoiler. Eldred kicked the shit out of Abaddon with his fucking staff and was about to clap the cunt when Chaos Gods pulled a bitch move and teleported Abaddon away. Eldred got a big little, you know, he got a little big big for his boots however, and he tried to awaken the God of Death, which is the Elder's trump card, as they believe the God of Dead will be able to shoot up Slanesh and then fuck the bullet holes, leading to the great return of the Eldar race. This plan failed however, and through a few more careless acts that cost the lives of a lot of Eldar, Eldred was banished from his craft world. He doesn't really give a fuck though, so after saving some Imperials and Elder, he came back to his craft world to fuck more shit up. Oh, did I mention that Eldred once took on a corrupted Primarch? It didn't go well for Eldred, but props for the cunt to trying. This next lad on the list is a Blood Angel. Hold on, which Primarch did he fight? Because I wouldn't want to fight any of them. Unless he was dead, then I will fight a dead Primarch, because I've already won. Because he can't fight back, unless he gets resurrected, in which case... Yeah, I'm not, not involved. Not, not involved at all. Let's continue. Which already makes him a badass, but it's what he overcame as a Blood Angel which really sets him apart. I'm talking about Mephiston. I hope that's his name, that's how it's spelled. Mm -hmm. Originally known by a more basic bitch <laughs> name, Mephiston was a Liberian Psyker of the Blood Angels. This might make him sound like a bit weak, but Librarians in 40k are absolute death machines, so he's sorted in that regard. During one of the many mm. battles on the planet of Armageddon, Hold Mephiston- on, did he say Librarian? Like the, the people that work in libraries? Mephiston was buried alive. For days he screamed in pain and slowly tore himself out of the tomb, mm. all the while battling for control of his sanity as the Black Rage, an affliction of the Blood Angels, took a hold of him. 
By the time he crawled out of his makeshift tomb, Mephitsen had become the first blood angel to overcome the black rage and channel its power into himself. Mm. He was instantly attacked by a group of greenskins just after escaping the rubble. However, this was a fucking terrible idea by the greenskins, as Mephitsen started ripping them to shreds with his bare hands. Eventually, the Greenskins legged it when Mephitsen punched a hole clean through their commander and Ooh. ripped out his heart. Mephitsen quickly rose in the ranks of the Blood Angels as he was- That's such a typical thing that I've seen so many things. When someone rises from the dead, they always kill somebody. Well, he wasn't actually dead. Well, he, they, actually, they always kill somebody by punching a hole in their chest and just ripping out the heart. They know orcs had organs, but, you know, sure, maybe they do. In the last video, though, I'm pretty sure Arch said they don't really have organs. He was shown to be one of the most powerful psychers that the Imperium had at the time. He became Chief Librarian and used his power to rip open the assholes of any- Wait, he didn't say Librarian, he said Liberian. But the only Liberian I know is from the country Liberia. Never mind. Enemies of the Imperium. When one of the Blood Angels declared he was the reincarnation of Sangurius, the dead Primarch of the Blood Angels, Mephitsen was like, Not sure if serious, let me check this out, and went over to have a look. Due to his incredible perception, Mephitsen quickly deduced that the Blood Angel was not the reincarnation of Sangurius, who was merely a pawn who had been corrupted by chaos. So naturally, Mephitsen was about to fuck this chaotic pretender in. However, the brother, the brother of the delusional Blood Angel arrived and was like, No, I must fight him instead, it's my destiny. So Mephitsen was like, Oh, okay, go ahead, buddy. And then the Blood Angel brother killed the chaotic Blood Angel. I should just really use their names for clarity, shouldn't I? Anyways, then the Lord of Change appears out of nowhere, but he got fucked to death as well. The best part of this is, during all this skull fucking, Mephitsen once again got taken down by the Black Rage. However, he then once again conquered it, and maintained his sanity. Being able to beat the Black Rage once is insane, in itself, but doing it twice is just ridiculous. And, badass. The next bit of meat on our sexy sexy list, is a man who definitely does not want to be on this list. The reluctant war hero who is somehow still alive, or was alive. See if it's Kane. Kane was an Imperial soldier with an irrelevant origin story. What is spicy about this lad is the fact that he isn't a superhuman or a psyker or augmented above anything usual. He's a typical run of the mill dude who survived some of the most horrific battles in the Imperium. He originally wanted a desk job or to work as an artillery crewman, aka not on the front lines, but he constantly found him. If I was in the Imperial Guard, I wouldn't want to be on the front lines either. Let's be honest. Himself neck deep in Eldar, Necrons, Tyranids, Orcs, and oh, Chaos. It was quite common for Kane to end up as the sole survivor of his regiment. Unfortunately for Kane, his ridiculous survival skills made him a war hero across the Imperium, so his superiors constantly just sent him back on suicide runs <laughs> to boost morale. Each time, Kane came back. Success. Why does he look like Wolverine, bro? Why look at his arms, bro? This man spends hours in the gym. Hours. Look at him. And he kind of looks like Wolverine with those side runs. He must be really good at hiding. But let's be honest, if he's always the last guy alive, he must be really good at hiding. So or not. And then, and he was then after that just sent on an even deadlier mission afterwards. It was ridiculous. Don't get me wrong, this cut is a war hero. Like, he's fucked shit up and killed many enemies in the Imperium. And led his forces to victory many times. His prowess with a chainsaw has been admired even by the enhanced space marines, and he was so good with his pistol that he's able to use it well beyond its effective operational range. What makes this badass a bit of a meme is the fact that when he finally did die, the Imperium ignored it and declared that he was still active in the battlefield <laughs> due to how many false KIAs and MIS Kane has accumulated. This makes Kane the only soldier in the Imperium to be on active duty despite having an official military funeral. You get him, Kane. Coming in hot with our next green boy, we have Tusker the Demon Killer. What yeah, Tusker Demon Killer is just crazy son of a bitch, isn't he? We watched a video on him, man. You check that one out. This guy, I mean, it is a bit laggy, you know, so... But, this guy went into the warp, and now he's in there for eternity, just fighting demons. What a legend. What I really like about Tusker, and why I rank him high on this list than Gaz, is the fact that this cunt has no divine protection or plot armor. He's a bit of an angry, murderous motherfucker, and then he, you know, he decided to take on Korn, the chaotic god of war. This all started when Tusker's ship was randomly attacked by a bloodthirster of Korn. Tusker killed the beast in a duel, and from it gained an intense hunger for war. 
He drove his, straight, his ship straight into the Eye of Terror and started anal fucking Korn's armies, eventually arriving at a planet owned by a legendary chosen... Stop Snapchatting me, cunt. Owned by a legendary chosen demon prince of Korn, known as the Blood Prince. The battle between Tusker's Horde and the Blood Prince's forces was legendary and came to a peak when Tusker and Mur engaged the prince in a duel, which would decide the outcome of the war. Despite being a massive badass, Tusker didn't have Gork and Mork sucking his dick like Gaz did, so Tusker took heavy wounds and was driven to his knees. Just as the Demon Prince was about to finish off Tusker, I fucking kid you not, the cunt jammed his power claw straight through the Blood Prince's dick hole and mutilated the shit out of his nutsack. The Blood Prince was obviously not a fan of this development and proceeded <laughs> to kill Tusker and his army. However, this was not to be the end. Only a Chaos God could still be functioning after that happened to him. Oh no, God, Chaos, a demon. Only a demon can be functioning after a power claw impales his nutsack, but you know. End of Tusker's legend, as Korn himself was so impressed with the spectacle of bloodshed that the orcs delivered, that he revived Tusker and brought him to the gates of his brass palace. Now, every day, Tusker leads his war against Korn's armies, only to lose and begin the cycle every day. And Tusker is completely cool with this, as this is a, probably the most fun he'll ever have. Mm. To optionally go and fight Chaos purely for fun is bad and ass enough, but to then get chosen by Korn for killing his own men is on another fucking level. Getting towards the end of this badass list, we have our first and only chaotic entry, and this is obviously Khan the Betrayer. If any of you wanted Abaddon on this list, then fuck off. That cunt sucks dick, like he got out by a fucking elven wizard in hand-to-hand -hand combat, along with failing every crusade he's ever attempted. I don't care that it was a recon to be part of some big spectacular plan, Abaddon sucks. Khan, on the other hand, is a murder fuck machine. Already a brilliant yet unstable warrior before the Horus Heresy, Khan was chosen by Khorne due to his insanely violent battle technique, which basically revolves around charging into the thickest part of the battle with a big fuck off axe and swinging it around like a madman, killing friend and foe alike. His mental state has deteriorated so much that he often cannot distinguish between ally and enemy and he just kills whatever's in his path. The cunt even has a kill counter, counter UI on his helmet. Like, I'm pretty sure he's clocked millions of kills with just his fucking axe, which is made of teeth of a space dragon. During the final battle of the Horus Heresy, Khan was again on the front lines, however got pretty fucked up and was basically a mangled corpse when his soldiers found him. He somehow made a full recovery, either due to being a massive hard cunt or Papa and Korn throwing him a bone. Either way, this cunt needed a vacation or something. Turns out his ideal vacation is in the Eye of Terror, looking for people to kill and a planet to call home. He eventually found some shitty demon world that was already occupied by another group of Chaos Marines, so began a massive war between the two factions that resulted in the planet getting super cold somehow. So cold in fact that during the night a Marine not under protection of shelter would freeze to death in seconds. So naturally the Marines were like, Fuck this, and called it a night and a truce, and everyone was friends, and they all went to bed. However, Khan was having none of this shit, and he decided that a bit of chilly wind was piss weak reason to seek shelter, so he proceeded to just start burning everything with a flamethrower, and he <laughs> killed everyone he found, regardless of whose team they were on. This earned Harris. him the title of Khan the Betrayer, as all the Marines left on the planet descended into a savage state and just fucked each other to death. Now, Khan travels the galaxy, looking to add anyone and anything to his already fucking ridiculous kill count. What a badass little sausage. And finally, the most badass motherfucker to wander around the 40k universe. He's no god, or super soldier, or demon, or avatar, or anything, which makes him all the more badass, even 10 times more so. I give you, drum roll. That hurts my fingers as a glass desk. Ibram Gaunt. Damn it. Starting off, this lad's story, we have a very large- I mean, I knew it wasn't Yarrick, because it's not the same thing, but I just wanted to say Yarrick. Poor guy. Large chaos invasion that destroyed his planet, along with most of its defenders. The only survivors being Gaunt and the regiment he led. Now, if Kane was the reluctant Mimi sp Imperial commander, then Gaunt was the fucking hard cunt, who was as badass as he was solid. One of his early acts before his planet got raped was to challenge his uncle in a chainsaw duel after Gaunt discovered his father died due to his uncle's cowardice and betrayal. Despite suffering disembowelment, Gaunt chain fucked his uncle to death and avenged his father. Good start. Jumping back to the juicy shit where he just got off his dead planet, 
Gorn transformed his surviving soldiers from ragtag survivors to extremely lethal guerrilla warfare specialists, earning his regiment the title of Gorn's Ghosts. He became feared by the Imperium and Chaos alike for his vicious and quick surprise attacks, while also dragging his gigantic ball sack across the face of any he deemed corrupted in any form. On top of this, he, be he leads his men from the front. He wields a blade that can cut through tanks. Mm. His first true test came when he fought and killed the Chaos Warlord during the Battle for Vergast, and from there his regiment went from victory to victory, saving countless Imperials and turning the tide of dozens of battles. Gaunt deeply cares for his regiment as well, hence why he saved them from his doomed world, instead of letting them just fight for honour and dying for nothing. He is a virtuous leader and his men respect him for it, rather than fear him, which is more common in the Imperium. Gaunt is utterly incorruptible, um, which is nearly impossible for a mortal man to achieve. Once captured, Gaunt was horribly tortured and had his eyes ripped out. When he was eventually rescued, the first thing he said was, Stop putting my regiment in danger, you fucking ketamine sucking shit cunt. When a mortal man who isn't chosen by any god and has no augmentations or mutations becomes an uncorruptible bastion of hope for the Imperium, you know that cunt is a total badass. Oh yeah, and he survived the war. As you do. Okay. That does it, ladies and Well, there's your list, ladies and gentlemen, man. This guy is not very, very PG, but you know, that's fine. Uh... Be sure to let me know what if you agree with this list. Is there anyone else who should be on this list? Be sure to let me know. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you all next time.